hey, it's Joe Mullings. I, uh, it's Monday, and we're starting the week again. And as usual, uh, we get data in all the time, and um, things change. As I said, you know, you've got the horizon, which has still not cleared itself. We don't know where that sits right now. And then we're looking at the windshield right now on a two-week rolling um, decision-making process. And out of that, you can sort of stake your life three days at a time and the decisions you make in business three days at a time. I thought I'd chat with you about managing expectations, especially from a career perspective. Uh, I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I am not here to tell you uh, even what job to interview on. But what I am here is to give you some guidance and thoughts that I'm on the phone with now literally hundreds of people a week, hiring managers, um, uh, companies, CEOs, if you're watching the other side, leaders in the industry. And um, look, here's the great news. The med tech industry, the healthcare industry, the biotech industry, life sciences and industry, we're going to come out of this incredibly strong. Uh, in relative terms, we're going to come out with that V. We're going into this with a real downturn, but we're going to come out of it uh, because we've discovered that um, life sciences, biotech, and med tech are more important than bombs, missiles, and aircraft carriers. So I think there's going to be a lot of investment back into this, and I also believe that there's a lot of suppressed um, demand. Um, but that suppressed demand right now is declaring itself probably in the casualties uh, or slowdowns we're seeing in the industry. So if you look at it, uh, the organizations that sell elective surgeries, uh, into the hospitals. Those have been put off because the hospitals right now are doing what they should do, saving people's lives on the front against this COVID-19. Uh, we're also seeing clinical trials get, you know, just stop dead in their tracks. Uh, so that has is, is, is caused companies to pull back and go into uh, uh, sort of financial secure mode. Even post-market studies are stopped. Uh, I've seen clients uh, just today downsize their team because of the post-market capabilities. You just can't get out there. Uh, and since there's no horizon in sight, we don't know when that's going to come. So uh, people will either termed or their furloughs. Um, look, it's the fight of our lifetime. There's, there's no question about that. But look, here's what is happening. I will tell you I've got a large number of companies that are hiring, that are continuing to push forward and hire. And the way they're managing that is they are conducting interviews via Zoom. We're getting three, four, five interviews via Zoom. And I think that's a good thing because now you can get a longer diligence process. You can have a much better look on both sides because there's not a rush as there usually is in the hiring process. And that's always been the liability in the hiring process from a employee fulfillment and a retention perspective. So you get a chance to have a much longer look uh, at a company and a company has the idea to have a much longer look at you. And look, they're all waiting until uh, the horizon is established and we are no longer uh, in a lockdown mode and eventually face-to-face -face, you can have that final interview. I've had clients making offers that are contingent on going on-site eventually from both sides. So I'm seeing that orchestrated as well. And I think you're going to see that carrying over to future-facing hiring processes and interviewing processes that need to be evalu evaluated anyway. So um, there's going to be a long delay. There's no doubt about it. I think there were some that romantic were thinking this was 30 or 60 days, but I think this is going to be a lot longer. This is just my personal opinion on this. Um, and the current situation is also going to have far-reaching implications. We talk about the hospitals. The hospitals are where all of the heroics are happening right now. And we shouldn't be worried about clinical trials selfishly. We shouldn't be worried about post-market trials. We shouldn't be worried about elective surgeries. We should be worried about those frontline workers in the healthcare industry that are literally saving lives and, and in a direct correlation, putting their lives at risk. And most of them are not even asking a question. They're running towards the danger. Here's what my concerns are. The hospitals themselves. The hospitals right now have absolutely just put themselves way out there. They no longer have the ability to make money on surgeries or procedures that are elective. That concerns me. The philanthropic, philanthropic efforts and support of hospitals probably have pulled back a little bit because people feel less rich on the uh, high net worth individual side due to the market coming down. That will come back. Everybody knows it's going to come back. And it'll come back, I believe, with a vengeance. 
but I'm just asking the people in Washington to think about, and I know you are, because I've been on the phone with those leaders. Let's think about a separate stimulus for the healthcare industry, the people who are throwing everything they have at this COVID situation, the healthcare workers, the hospitals that have forgotten about profits, that are forgotten about money. And they are going to need on the other side of this when they finally do get a breath, they're going to need help as well because their financial balance sheet is going to be a train wreck at the expense of saving lives. And so I'm hoping that the people in charge are going to keep that in mind because if you don't support our hospitals and that healthcare system, all these med tech companies that are willing to sit back and wait in line for this to declare itself on the other side are also going to be casualties because most products flow through the hospitals, flow through the elective surgeries or procedures. And when I say elective per surgeries and procedures, I'm even talking about patients who have to wait for oncology treatments, right? For, 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 for treatments that are keeping them alive. Uh, those are on hold. They can't even walk into the hospital. And then, you know, finally, I'm not sure what's designated as essential or non-essential, and this is a little bit more of an op-ed on my side. I'm not sure that I agree with the current category essential or non-essential. I was on the phone with a VP of Qual today who got let go from a company because they had no post-market avenue to push their product through. And he told me his wife is a real estate agent. And he reminded me that as a real estate agent, there are 27 different people that are in that supply chain that allow that pro property to close. 27 people that are affected by that. Is that non-essential? I don't know. And again, this is not a political conversation, nor is it suggesting that we adjust sort of the, the, the distancing, the social distancing. I just want these questions to be asked and think about this on a recovery. And how about the small mom and pop coffee shop in the small town that I talked to somebody today that has 2,000 people in? They're also at risk, right? Because people can't stop in and grab a coffee uh, in order to support that mom and pop. So if you go in there and get that coffee because you do want to take a break and you do want to wait in line so when the person in there leaves and you stay outside that six feet, pay six bucks for that cup of coffee. You should be your own stimulus package towards the consumers and the small mom and pop in your industry, right? So try and pay that forward. Look, at the end of the day, you know, this is going to be a challenge. We need to keep our eyes on that horizon. We need to know that on the other side of this, we are going to be okay, but until then, it's going to be absolutely devastating to so many people, myself, my team, yourself, your team, your family. But on the other side, I think a lot of things are going to be rethought. I think a lot of processes. I think a lot of telehealth. I think a lot of teleintegration is going to come out of this, as most crises and terrible things that occur on the other side. So look, I'm wishing you all well. I just felt compelled to do this today. Just know that people are interviewing, organizations are hiring, there are organizations also compressing. But you need to look at this in an infinite game, not as a nine inning game, because if you play it as a nine inning game, you're going to get depressed and then you're going to always find what you look for, the bad things. Play this as an infinite game. If you're 20 years old, you got 70 more years. If you're 70 years old, you got 20 more years in the scope of things. So listen, I'm wishing you all well, wishing you all power, wishing you all just just have the, 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 the courtesy to each other. Uh, it's okay to be pissed. Uh, it, it's, it's okay to be worried about the future. Uh, uh, just absolutely manage your expectations. Plan on this being six months, nine months. Reverse engineer it. And uh, I'm here. My team's here. We're here in the office. If we're not in the office, we're available on text and phone. Call us. Um, but... Uh, uh, I'm wishing you all well, and I felt compelled to share this with the industry. I'm Joe Mullings. All the best to you.